All right, everybody, welcome back. This is Jeff again, doing some Twilight Imperium tutorial content. Um, the more I play this game, <laughs> the more I feel like I need to add more to my tutorial videos. And I do think they're in order, right? If you watch the first two or three, uh, you can play a game and have a good time. Um, but if you keep watching, there's just levels of things that you may or may not use well that you'd use better. Today we're going to talk about promissory notes. Um, not exhaustive. <laughs> Now, why would I say that? There's basically four in the base game, five in the expansion, and then every faction has one. So it's it's fractal. There's so many combinations here that I cannot get into. But today I will go over the basic ones. What do they mean? Like, how do you use them? What's the point? What do they do? And then the faction in this game I'm walking us through, slowly but surely. Um, and I'll go into the, the four factions of this game and then encourage you to read more. There's, uh, there's many good PDFs and guides out there that just have all the base game data in like a PDF. And uh, yeah, those are worthy of reading. Um, I'll, I'll, maybe I'll put a link into one in the video. Um, but anyway, let's jump on in. Okay, so there's these. Every color gets four in the base game and then a fifth one for the expansion. So um, some of these are easier than others. Um, but let's let's start with the first, uh, what would I call the first The first, the first uh, three that I'd call tradables. The, the one that gives a victory point, untradeable, and alliance, also untradeable. So, okay, um, what's the first one? First one is called Trade Agreement. Uh, and it's a, it has a timing window, just like the action cards we talked about last time. When the player replenishes commodities. That's, so that's when you can use it. Uh, the blue player gives all of their commodities, then return this card to the blue player. Not bad. So this one, again, if you want to guarantee a trade, and these, by the way, these are all binding. They cannot be broken. You cannot break them. So that means any time, so for example, there's the X-Jaw. They have four. That's a pretty rich one. Anytime this is refreshed, that other player will get four trade goods. That's a lot of money. It's a big deal. That's a, I mean, if you're looking in game terms, right, that's a dreadnought. So it's a battleship. That's a pretty good deal. All right, so this is good if you want to get a trade or, you know, something binding and you want to make sure you get paid in the future. Next one, this one's a big deal too, Ceasefire. After the blue player activates a system that contains one or more of your units. The blue player cannot move units from that system, then return this card to a blue player. If you're worried about somebody, um, this is a way for them when they attack you, just cost them a chit and you get a whole turn of warning. Uh, it's a big deal. Um, I'll talk about some strategy in a second, but let me go over them first. Uh, next one, we haven't talked about agenda phase yet, I think that's in two videos. Uh, but this one, when an agenda is revealed in the agenda phase, the blue player cannot vote, play action cards, or use faction abilities until after that agenda has been resolved. Then give the card back. If you notice, each one of these, after they've been actuated, you get it back. So you can be prevented from attacking, you can give your money away, or you can be prevented from voting, but as soon as it happens, you, you receive it back. Okay, so those are the base three. The next one, this is the biggest one um, deal-wise, Support for the throne. When you receive this card and you are not the blue player, you must place it face up in your play area and gain one victory point. It's a, you give away victory points, everybody. Why wouldn't you do that? Well, or why would you? Um, here we go. If you activate a system that contains one or more of the blue player's units, or if the blue player is eliminated, you lose one victory point. <laughs> so you both have an interest to keep that person alive and not attack them. So basically it's a more binding agreement than, say, a ceasefire. Because this is just, it's harder to attack them. This one, you literally lose a victory point to attack them. And finally, Alliance. Um, receive this card. You are not the blue player. You have to set it up. Uh, while this card is in play, you may use the blue player's commander ability if it's unlocked. And then if you attack them, you have to give it back. And now, in the expansion, actually, I had these printed, and I'm getting them soon, I think. Basically, whoever your commander is, you get them. The X Jaws is just this one. Um... Whenever you vote in the agenda phase, each planet's one vote, and game effects cannot prevent you from voting. Uh, it's specific. It's very specific, but it can be quite good. Now, what is some of the logic? And I'll be honest, in a lot of games I play with newer players, these almost never get used. Uh, there's a couple things. You start the game with them. So, th basically, uh, they cost you nothing now, something later. So there's something every player has uniformly to trade. So that's good, right? You, you know, but they constrain you some way in the future. So that can be hard. Um, they're also great if you want to get a secure border. 
especially in a game that's like five, six, seven people, um, think about it. If you gave your support to the throne to a neighbor, or you both exchanged ceasefires, you now would have, like, let's look at our map, right? Like, let's say, remember the x child went really hard into Purple's Slice, and we'll play this out in the next video, actually. Um, so these guys are kind of animosity already. Like, I don't think they're going to be that friendly. But let's say x wants to kind of buy off the bugs over here. What are they called again? The Sardak. That might be a good ceasefire exchange. Now, why might the Sardak not do it? Well, if if these blue guys have a bunch of exposed planets, and they're a fighty faction, it's actually probably pretty worthy to go take some of them. But that's where you negotiate, right? Like, so for example, if the blue guy wanted to get all of these planets, you probably wouldn't support for the throne or ceasefire. But if he's like, hey, I just want the one next to my home system, and I want to connect to the Mechtal Rex, that's all I want. You can have these ones. Um, this guy might actually sign the deal. So it can be a way to bindingly sign, you know, kind of um, secure your border. Uh, two games ago, actually, uh, the person who I was second, the person who won the game, um, he had given me his support for the throne. So I had to lose a victory point to attack him, even though he was winning. In the end, I didn't, and he won. So <laughs> it does happen. <laughs> so th these do have a pretty big impact. All right, now, how are they used practically? Let's go over a little bit of that. Um... Um, so if, uh, why would you give these out? Well, like I said, they could be mutual, like say you want to protect a border, but they can also be when you're being extorted, right? If somebody's like attacking you and you're like, hey, stop attacking me, I'll give you a promissory note, like I'll give you something. And this one, by the way, the support for throwing the alliance are the big two. These ones are hard, I would not recommend giving away right away, but these three, generally speaking, they may, and your, your factions, which we'll get into in a bit. Um, these are pretty good to give away. They don't cost you anything now and they can buy you some security. Now, why might you not want to give them away? First, I'm going to show you the backsides of these. The backsides of all these generics are the same color. See that? Now, what does that mean? That means these ones that have the black bold text are anonymous. That means they do not work. You don't have to tell people about them. You can trade them in secret to somebody else. Which means, uh, until they play them, you don't know they are. And even better, um, these three, another player can trade them away without asking you. <laughs> So once your political secret or your ceasefire trade agreement is out on the board, you lose control of it. Other people can trade it like a currency. So this is a currency, and it is something that constrains you. Um, so it's good to keep that in mind. Um, they're like a fourth level of currency almost. So it's um, something that matters. Now, why can it matter? How can they each be used that way? Uh, for example, the most common way to use trade agreement, um, when somebody gets the trade card. Here we go. And they want to make sure they get paid when they replenish your commodities. They can ask for trade agreements. That makes a lot of sense. It means they guarantee you get paid and you can't screw them. All right. Trade agreements can also be used if you're trying to buy something from somebody else and you don't have any money. But like say extra, right? They have four commodities. They say, hey, I'll give you my trade agreement for this thing. Uh, like, for example, you can buy relic fragments. So, okay, I'll give you my trade agreement for your relic fragment. Not a bad deal. Not a bad deal at all. Um, now, in this case, where Extra had trade last turn, they already have four bucks. They could just give you four bucks. Almost always, I would say it's better to give away your commodities than to give away your trade agreement. But say you're right now, I don't think Lizix has any, right? They have, they're missing two. They didn't get any trade, um, they didn't get any trade last turn. They would be more likely to give away their promissory note. So, that's trade. Uh, interesting, I don't think it hurts you that bad, but it can, it can hurt trade middle and late game. Uh, ceasefire. I am not a fan of giving away ceasefire um, because it constrains who you can attack. Um, but it's great if you're worried about making a border or if you're somebody you can't really trust and you're like, hey, they're like, trust me. You're like, great, okay, I trust you. Give me your ceasefire. <laughs> right? It's, it's, a, it's a basically hard-coded rules trust. So um, ceasefire is great if somebody's being very aggressive and then pretending they're not going to be aggressive. Great up, get them put their mouth where they're you know, put them their actions where their mouth is. Uh, can, like I said, too, it can be used to secure a border. Um, if you want to, like, not give the person a victory point, but you want to keep that border a little bit more passive. You could give each other each other ceasefire, um, which secures the border more. So it, it's pretty straightforward, I think. Political secret, because we haven't gone through agenda phase yet. I'll do more when we get there. Um, I, I'm actually going to play this game to the end of a round, capture Mechatol, show you guys a real agenda phase. Um, but this one, 
And I'll trade one of these away just so you can see how it works. Um, being able to not vote or do anything. Now, I'm not sure how that interacts with Xjaw's alliance. My gut would say Xjaw can still vote. Because this says game effects cannot prevent you from voting. That means this can't prevent you from voting, which I don't think Xjaw's political secret works. But for everybody except Xjaw, um, an, uh, an agenda, which we'll go over, could come up. Like, let's say it's like to give everybody else a victory point. Or you want to kill someone, or you want to get a big benefit. If you knocked out somebody's votes, it's way easier to win the election. And if you had two of these, it's almost a guaranteed win. So if, if you can, people don't value these very highly, but they can really come into play if you get two or three of them. And you could really easily win a vote. So that might be a big deal. Um, support for the throne we already talked about. Um, generally speaking, uh, you can use it to buy somebody off. That's why it's great. Uh, in kind of the wider Twilight Imperium uh, strategic game, people love to do what they call a quote-unquote support for the throne swap, where you and one other person uh, give each other one point to kind of help each other win, but also to have one person you're not fighting. Um, both ways work, uh, but I wouldn't give it for nothing. Like last game, the two day games ago, that game where I lost, the guy gave it to me for all his votes on something he won that got him a victory point. So basically he got a victory point and I got a victory point, which was a good deal, although his he couldn't lose and mine I could lose. So in the end I got a worse deal, but still I didn't know that at the time. All right, alliance. Alliances are interesting. Um, it depends on the commander, right? Some are excellent, some aren't that good. So like for example, if you ask me is the extra, this voting ability, is that better than say the Sardak? By the way, theirs I would say is better. This basically, you can invade planets from systems adjacent systems so for example uh say this cruiser flies here and I, ha I don't have the commander unlocked yet but say i did the cruiser could fly here and an infantry from each of these planets could invade he has no capacity but they can still invade it's like their troops just kind of like teleport around that is freaking awesome um same with the lizix theirs is planetary shields don't stop bombardment also really excellent. Why? Uh, orbital guns can't defend infantry anymore, so spaceships become much more powerful. Um, Hakan's I don't think was that great. Another agenda phase one. You can spend trade goods to vote. It's, it, again, it's breaking a rule. Normally you can't use trade goods to vote. Uh, situationally good. Depends how rich you are, but it could be great. So it depends on your game. Uh, so that one also is like an alliance, aka trading to other people, um, but it also gives you someone not to attack. So say you had somebody who had your support and you switched alliances, that might be a good idea. It's basically two reasons to not attack each other. So there's a lot of logic to how to do it. Some, some people like to have one safe neighbor. Some people like to trade across the board. It just depends on your what you prefer in your gaming group and stuff. I'd say if I could do it, I personally probably prefer to trade across the board, especially in a bigger than four people. So five, six, seven, eight person game, I'd rather trade across the board so I have flexibility to kind of hit both my neighbors. Um, but that depends, right? If I'm not playing a combat faction, I probably wouldn't do that. All right. So that's the basics of the promissory notes. Uh, for new players, they're almost impossible to use. or And it's really hard to not get taken advantage of. So generally speaking, if you ask my advice, I'd say uh, don't use them unless you pretty consistent or convinced it's a good deal. Especially if it's an experienced player telling you it's a good deal, probably don't do it. <laughs> You're better off not making the other person rich, in my opinion. Now let's get into faction ones. The faction ones are so var varied, it's almost hard to explain them. But basically, they generally are some element of your faction ability which you can give away. And generally, it hurts you. For example, this one. You basically get the extras, it's called the quash ability. You, which is, you can spend one strategy token and end an agenda phase ability. We'll show this when we get to uh, the agenda phase example. But the extras card is... Somebody else can do this. So remove one token from the extra strayer strategy pool, return it to reinforcements, discard the reveal the agenda, and get a new one, and give this card back to the extra. Basically, the extra give you their ability, and they pay for it. Very powerful, and it hurts the extra. Again, I wouldn't give that away, unless it was lots of money. Um, another one, this is for the bugs, who are the plus one to combat guys. If you look at the top, where it says unrelenting top right, so they give this away, but only for infantry combat. So the start of an invasion, add plus one result of each of your infantry combat rolls. Pretty good. And if it attacks you, it's minus one. Yeah. Now, this one is 
not always that popular. I probably wouldn't give it away unless they use it immediately. Um, so somebody's attacking a planet, like, hey, you want to buy Teclar for a buck? Yeah, sure. So they use it, win, give it back. That's Because I wouldn't want somebody to use it against me, to be honest with you. Uh, not a bad one. How about uh, Hakans? Hakans, again, great. This one's an action, which again makes it better. You place it in your play area. This is a permanent ability. While this card is in your play area, you may negotiate transactions with players who are not your neighbor. You get Hakan's best ability. Uh, but then if you attack Hakan, you give it back. Mm. So again, right, it's another layer of almost like an alliance. Very good. Um, how about theirs? Oh, these guys, they got a new one. So see, there's a little Omega symbol next to it. It means they basically patched the game because their original note was so bad. This one, when you gain commands tokens during the status phase, gain one additional command token. Then give this card back to the Lizix player. So this player can give free command tokens. That is amazing. That's worth at least three, two to three bucks. If I was them, I'd be hustling that every turn, every turn. One or two bucks, just sell it, sell it, sell it, sell it. They could get quite rich off it. Um, very good. So yeah, and there's basically 20 more. If you wanted to know more, um, I'll put a link but um, in the description for this where I'd get this. But if you go to um, Board Game Geek and look up Twilight Imperium's expansion and then files, uh, in the files they have a bunch of like, say, faction information in a you know in a low resolution or like a, just a text pdf that's how you can kind of see um what your faction can trade away uh it's cool some are some are very painful some are like this one the extra one which i would say is painful to you but some are like the lizix one which are just like a gift and it doesn't hurt you although you're helping someone else and then some are like also like trade convoys right you're actually making somebody else you like, you lose your best ability as Hakan, which is you can trade with everybody. And then, again, the, the bugs can just make you fight better. Uh, and considering how hard infantry combat is, this is better than people think. I'd pretty much always pay a buck for that. Um, but anyway, that's my introduction to Promise. I know everyone. A little shorter than some of my videos. Um, there's not that many of them, but they, in, the interactions can be really intense. I just wanted to introduce you to them uh, so you can try to get a feeling for what they are. I'm not going to tell you what I think they're worth or anything except for just how I might use them. Uh, I would recommend trying them in your game. Just to, It's an element of the game. It's another currency. It's something you have from the start that's quote-unquote free that'll cost you later. It's, it's basically space debt. That's what this is. So uh, give it a try. See how you like it in your game. Uh, hopefully this was helpful. I'll see you all in the next one, which will be... We'll, we'll play through this map round two. So I'd show you how the round two play. So how would these factions react round two? What would they invade? Um, then somebody will take Mechatol, I'm sure. And then uh, we'll have an agenda phase, and that'll be the agenda phase video. Uh, all right, until next time. Take it easy, everybody.